be in the room, Anita. Let me invite this handsome hung from District 101, DTM Abhijit, to start the meeting. The Toastmaster of the day, DTM Abhijit, the stage is yours. Our special session today. You know, I came to United States a few decades ago. And the first thing they told me the first day is you need to have a resume. So I had to work on my resume on that first day when I landed in the United States because we had to get an on campus job. Today, we have a special guest, Anita, who has been in recruiting for over two decades and she has been at nvidia for nearly a decade she has helped me in my last two jobs please help me welcome anita from nvidia anita it's all you you are on mute no, um, I should not be on mute. You can hear me. Okay, good. Um, my computer is on mute, but I dialed in separately with my cell. So um, since we were having some audio problems. So I wanted to talk to you guys first a little bit about a resume, um, a couple of styles of resume that is not effective before we dive into the resumes that are effective. So sometimes people try to hide um, hide things about their background. Maybe they try to hide gaps, um, gaps in employment. Magical resume. They um, they choose to make a. Um, uh, how, um, it, it's like um, I'm, I can't remember the name of my discouragement, but all of a sudden I've lost the name. Um, it's a basically a, a topic kind of resume where they try to show. Okay, well I have these skills, these skills, these skills, and these skills, and then they kind of like you know mention some dates and. Um, and, but there's no real solid matter. So I want to first say, if that's the kind of resume that you're using right now, um, a lot of times um, I see that a lot with salespeople where they, um, they try to make a really like um, flashy resume and they're not really talking about specific things. Um, and I also see a lot when people are trying to hide, uh, maybe hide deficiencies or hide changes in their resume. Um, it's a big red flag if you don't use a chronological resume. Um, and so I'm going to recommend for everyone on this um, call in this meeting um, that the chronological resume is really the most straightforward resume and it's really the most effective resume. Um, and I, um, I have the privilege of having worked both at NVIDIA for about 10 years and um, at other um, companies for many years. And my other companies, um, I was um, in a staffing organization. And so I interfaced with a lot of different kinds of companies. I worked directly with hiring managers. Um, I very, very rarely took an account if it was working with a recruiter. Um, I always had that relationship with the hiring manager. And it's the same kind of relationship I have now with um, um, here at NVIDIA. And so um, I have a, a unique perspective in that I've sat down with hiring managers, you know, side by side, looking at resumes together, and I get to hear a lot of feedback. And um, so most of um, most of what I'm going to be sharing today is um, <clears throat> from years of um, listening to the feedback, listening to what works, um, what doesn't work, and then um, creating tips. And I haven't. Um, I used to give tips regularly when I was in staffing like 10 years ago. I would actually bring people into my office, sit them down, and help them uh, build a resume. Um, as Abhijit mentioned, having a resume, uh, a good working resume is very important. Um, and I could t I'll tell you one story, and then we'll dive into the resume uh, stuff itself. I, um, there was this candidate I had. He applied to um, – he applied – or he sent me – I think I found him on Career Builder or something. I don't remember exactly, maybe on Dice or something. And he sent me um, some details about his background, but it wasn't a resume. 
And I read through the details and I realized that this candidate had some good skills. And um, so I called him up and I said, hey, listen, you, you responded to me. You sent me these details, but this isn't a resume. Can you send me a resume? And he said, well, you know, this is all I have. I don't have anything else. And I said, this is all you have, really? Okay, you need to come in and meet with me. And so he came in. We sat down. I interviewed him. And I basically asked him, so tell me, what, what do you do right now? And we went backwards. So we started with his present job and then we went down. And I, I just kept asking him, and what else do you do? And what else do you do? Okay, great. Well, how does that work? What technologies did you use to do it? And at the end, um, I took all of those details um, that he gave me and I said, well, here's your resume. And he was like, what? Wow, really? And I had actually sent what he had uh, to one of my teams um, I sent what he had, but it wasn't good enough. I, um, and so I resent the resume and I said, please take a look at this candidate. Um, we, we went ahead and created a resume. Um, I think that you, I think you're going to want him. And, um, and he, um, he got an interview, he got an offer, but here's the funny thing. He had sent his resume to some other companies that he really wanted to go to. And, um, and so he resent this, um, this new resume, this really powerful resume that actually had his experience captured in a way that was easy to read and clear. And a company that had ignored him and turned him down, turned around, asked for an interview, and ended up hiring him. And so I had gotten him an offer. He did not accept my offer, and he got hired. And he, um, he called me back afterwards, and he said, you know, I'm sorry I can't accept your offer. Um, you, you helped me so much. He said, I'm accepting an offer that I know I wouldn't, I would not have gotten without you. They had already turned me down. They didn't even want me based on what I sent them. And after you helped me write that resume, um, they immediately interviewed me and gave me this offer. Um, I did not ask for anything, but the, um, the, the person paid me $500 for working with him on his resume. And, and that's how powerful a resume can be. So, so with that, I'm going to go ahead um, because that could be you. Maybe your resume is powerful. Maybe it's not. And we're going to talk about a few tips. You don't have to be um, a, like a superstar resume maker to be able to construct a very powerful resume. So we're going to talk about some basic tips um, to get you guys started. So I'm going to share my screen. And, and I'm happy to also... Um, uh, give you this document. Um, this is, let's see here. Um, maybe I'll share Word. I'm trying to, sorry. Oh, there it is. Um, okay, here it is. So, um, all right, here it is. So, all of these tips that you're going to see in here are translatable into any technology. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple of concepts. So we're going to go through the whole resume and then we're going to go back up and we can pick it apart a little more. Okay. So um, at the top of the resume, you always want to have your, your name, a full name. I, I see people put like their first name and an initial. Don't do that. Just put your full name, um, an address. However, this one is the one where I would say, um, if you aren't comfortable putting your address, that's fine, especially if you're posting on places like Monster, Career Builder, Dice, and so forth. Um, however, do either put the city, like let's say you live in San Jose, you could put San Jose, California, um, or the area, the Bay Area, uh, New York City area. I, I don't know where everyone is from on this call. So um, you want to have something so that people know where you live, especially if your phone number isn't in that area. So it's even more important that you have a location and then an email address. Um, when it comes to objectives, you wanna have either a very general objective that captures, that can be applied to any industry, or you wanna change that objective um, specifically for every single job, okay? Um, and objective is so important. That's why if you're not, if, if you forget to change it even once, you could get declined. One of the feedbacks I get um, when I'm um, when I'm reviewing resumes is, 
well, this guy says he wants to work on X, Y, and Z, but our job is um, ABC. And so I'm passing and I'll say his skills look good and he applied to the job. Yeah, but his resume is pretty specific. He doesn't want this kind of job. He wants something I can't offer him or her. And so the objective, um, it should either be general or you need to modify it for every specific job. So, and then <clears throat> under the summary of your experience, I ideally recommend to have somewhere between five or six, maybe seven bullet points. Don't have a book. When you have a book, um, you'll, you'll lose your, your reader, basically. You want to be very specific and you want your summary of experience to be kind of a pointer. So your summary of experience is going to allude to things that are relevant in your resume. So you, you like, let's say, um, you know, I created this as a sample resume. Um, and so let's say you're saying that you have 10 years of experience in object oriented programming. I should be able to, um, once I come down into the resume, I should be able to see 10 plus years of C++ and Java. Or um, let's see, there's some other object, object oriented, I think there's an object oriented Perl or Python. I should see something that is object oriented in every job for like 10 years, if I'm gonna say this. So you want these to be accurate, all right? Um, another thing that you wanna have is, you wanna have your skills, make them clear and easy to read and have it in order of strength. So if your number one skill is um, is C and C++, um, then that should be the number one skill on your resume. You, you don't wanna put JavaScript on your resume um, as the number one skill if that one is a weaker skill, okay? So um, you, you wanna do that with all of your uh, technologies. Another thing that you wanna do, and we can go back, we'll, we'll go back and look at each of these areas. So this is just kind of an overview. You wanna make sure your education is here. Now, if you have a higher education, um, like a PhD or a master's, I definitely recommend that you actually put the education up above your experience because you want people to see, yes, you have a master's. Yes, you have um, a, a PhD. Yes, you have um, a, a bachelor's. If you have graduated with um, any kind of, um, you know, awards or a great GPA, make sure you put that on as well. All right. And then the next thing you want to do is if you have any special certifications that are related to your position, then go ahead and put those. Now, you could put this at the end of your resume as well. You don't need to put it at the beginning. Um, either one is fine, but especially when you have a PhD, I always recommend that it's at the beginning. It, 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 um, for managers that are looking, especially if their role says master's or PhD is preferred, um, having that front and center um, will put the manager at ease and allow them to read the rest of your resume knowing that, yes, you have that, that um, one requirement, okay? Um, and then when it comes to job, uh, start with your most recent job. Don't start with your first job out of school and then build it backwards. Start with the most current job. This is where your most relevant experience or your most uh, current, your most fresh experience is, okay? And then at the end, um, you'll, and then you'll, you'll just basically work down. If you do have good, um, some gaps, like let's say um, you took a, a pause from work for a year. Maybe you had a sick, um, a sick relative. You might want to just put in there, like um, took care of my mom. And while I did it, I was studying X, Y, and Z um, or something like that. Um, People wonder about gaps if the gaps are too big. If the gaps are a couple months, no biggie, okay? But if the gap is pretty big, um, you could make a mention or you could mention it in your cover letter, okay? And um, especially if it's recent, if it's way back there, don't worry about it. But if it's something in the last three years, then you may wanna mention something, okay? Um, the next thing is if you have um, any kind of awards, honors, or even special extracurricular activities. Great to, to mention some of them. Maybe, maybe you, um, maybe you, you volunteer with, uh, you know, with uh, Greenpeace or you volunteer with another organization. It will show that you have a heart. It will show that you're, 
that you're active in your community. So it's nice to have a little mention of it. And it could also be a, a talking point because maybe they're, the person who's reading your resume also does similar things and it will give you guys some an icebreaker. They'll be able to see from your resume, okay, this is somebody who's involved in their community and, um, and it's like an icebreaker. And then the last thing is references. Um, I think it's nice to just say that references will be provided on request. Don't include your references on your resume. Okay, so that's kind of a quick overview. I'm going to get into some of the things that make a resume powerful. So let's start. Um, we can actually start here. So um, I have um, a couple of things I want to mention about it. All right. First of all, Every job that you have, unless it's really far back, if it's in the last 10 years, you should have at least three bullet points, probably not more than seven. You, um, you want to pick the bullet points that make the most sense. You want to uh, construct your bullet points in a way that they're very powerful. Um, and so, um, I'm sorry? Is someone asking me a question? No, it was some by mistake. Oh. Okay, okay. So, so make sure that the bullet points um, are relevant. Make sure that when you organize them, it's ideal to organize them from with the, the task that you do the most, like let's say 50% of your job is doing C++ programming, then have the first bullet point be about that. If the, um, if the job is something you do less, have that bullet point um, be farther down on your um, on on the bullet pointed list. Um, and now I'm going to get into the things that make the biggest difference. Number one, action words. Make sure when you make that bullet point, it starts with an action word. So created. Think of it this way. You're saying I created this. I developed that. It should be a verb. Okay. So an action word um, would be something like designed, developed, created, architected, coded, programmed, tested, led, etc. All right. So why an action word? Sometimes people put a lot of fluff. Um, when managers are reviewing a resume, they want to know what you've done. And they also want to know if there's some, um, some big um, uh, thing that you've completed. So if you designed a full database, that, that could also, you know, you could say design an entire um, uh, SQL database, for instance, um, and then talk a little bit about the function of that database. So action words are definitely the biggest area that I see people make mistakes when they're actually within the bullet pointed section of their resume. Don't do big paragraphs. Make sure that the, the, um, the sentences are easy to read. It could, you could have one or two sentences um, <clears throat> per uh, bullet point, but you don't want it to be like, like a, a book. You don't want to lose your reader. You want to interest them enough and let them know that they have the ex you have the experience they're looking for and give them a place to say, oh, I see on your resume that you created a, an SQL database. Tell me about that project. So it should be a talking point, okay? Um, we're going to come up here because I've got a lot of other great tips, and I am happy to share uh, this document that I created for um, with Abhijit, so he can share it with all of you as kind of a, a roadmap. And just remember, um, it doesn't matter what your background is, whether you're in sales, whether you're in engineering, whether you're um, wh whether you work at Starbucks. This format will work for every um, for every uh, uh, scenario, basically. Um, so, another thing that you want to do in a, a first is action words. Start your sentence with a power with a, uh, an action word or a power verb. Um, and I have an entire like even more than that little mini mini miniature one here to choose from. So, um, Abhijit will share this with you, but. Built, achieved, accomplished, demonstrated, conducted, forecasted. So the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you build in the technology that you used into that sentence. So think of it this way. Um, your, your, your biggest experience, 
let's say you're you're um, you're developing a, a, a front end, you're working at, as a front end developer or a back end developer, and maybe you're using Java, maybe you're using JavaScript, maybe you're using cascading style sheets. You want to make sure that you specifically mention those technologies and what you're doing with them. Um, and you don't want to use so many technologies that you make the reader think that all you are is a, um, um, that you're just like throwing uh, buzzwords on a page. They should be meaningful. When we see resumes that are just filled with, um, with buzzwords, we often think this person doesn't know what they're doing. This person just wants to, um, they want to try to impress us, but they, you know, they have no clue and they're probably not a very good engineer. The best engineers use just the most relevant technologies on their resume if, um, and they will mention if they're applying to a position that has a requirement, they'll make sure that they look at their resume and that they mention something that is relevant to that role. So that's an, uh, um, another area is, um, be, you know, make sure that you're mentioning the specific technologies. You don't want a lot of fluff. You don't want a lot of like, you know, like if they were to, uh, to interview you and say, okay, so you said that you wrote, um, you know, front end stuff using JavaScript and cascading style sheets. Go ahead and um, write a quick code to do this X, Y, and Z. Now, if you can't do that code and you're sitting here on your resume saying you do it, you can do it. And then in an interview, you can't, that's very misleading. So everything on your resume should have, um, you, you should be able to validate it with your actual skills in the interview. So that would mean coding. That would be mean being able to deep dive. Um, but people tell me, well, Anita, well, I didn't do that for five years. I, it's on my resume. I put it there five years ago, but I don't remember. I recommend that you treat interviewing like you would treat a midterm. I recommend that you review your resume from top to bottom and everything that you see, that if you can't um, answer a technical question about that right then and there, before you stick that resume out in the world, study up. Or before you accept the interview, study up. Make sure that everything on your resume, you can actually answer a technical question on and you can dive deep. And it's fine if it was like 10 years ago and you could say, you know what? Um, I've been working in Java and C++ um, most recently for the last 10 years. I use C um, for the first five years of my career and I would, yeah, I'm a little rusty right now. I need, to, um, I need to study up, but that's something I would really love to do. Um, I've actually been looking to get back into C programming. So if it was important to this position, I would do whatever it would take to get myself up to, um, up to speed, whether it would be you know, taking a class, reading a textbook, um, working extra overtime um, on my own time to make sure that those skills are there. So that um, it, it's not just about building a powerful resume. If you can't, if you can't validate the resume through your own words, your own speaking, your own skill, then you probably shouldn't have it on the resume. So before sending your resume out, go back and look. And um, just see, are there things that fluffed up your resume to make it look good, but you can't answer anything technically? You might want to either study up or take it off the resume. Um, let's see. Uh, see if I have any other ideas that I'm, th I'm not thinking of right now. Uh, why is this not going down? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Um, Another thing that you can do is you can use um, some other kinds of power words. Like you can use effective. You're, you're an effective manager. You can use like um, any of these, um, I think they're adverbs um, actually. Effective, effectively, effectiveness, significantly, thoroughly, substantially, proficiently. Um, I do remember one time I put on my resume that I was, um, that I, 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 I was, was somebody who paid attention to detail. And then I had a mistake on my resume and they brought it up. They said, you said that you're detail oriented and that you pay attention to detail on your resume, but look, you have this typo right here. 
make sure you look for those types of things. And if you've um, gone through your resume and um, did a spell check, but you like did the um, like ignore, 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 take your resume, paste it into a new Word document so that you can see all the red lines that come up. And that way you can make sure that you've double checked your resume, that your grammar isn't poor, that you're, um, that you actually are paying attention to detail because you really don't want to be in a, a position like I was where I, I basically was like, Oh my goodness. I thank you so much. I can't believe I did that. You're right. Um, I, I normally um, pay attention de to detail and I totally flaked on that. And we both got a laugh out of it and they hired me anyway, but they brought it up and it, it you know, it made me look bad. So you want to make sure that your resume doesn't have um, little like glaring errors like that. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that I'm going to, uh, let's see, let me just go back to the top and see if we can uh, discuss anything else here. So with the skills, again, um, in this area, I recommend that you do core skills things that you're very strong with. Um, you could say also have exposure to X, Y, and Z, especially if you're applying for a job. When, when, I, um, when people apply for the jobs, one of the things managers look for is they look for at least an 80 to 85% match. They don't care if there's some ramp, but they want to see something that lets them know that you're going to be able to um, uh, to do that job. So it's fine to put that you um, that you have exposure to some of the skills that will help them know that you you can actually do their job. And I see that I have a um, a hand here. Um, Deanna, did you have a question? Deanna, can you type it in the chat? She's going to type it as soon as she types it. I will ask you the question. Okay, great, great. Um, and then I'm going to come back up here to the, um, to the summary of the skills. So one of the things that you can do, the first, like, let's say three, four, five, maybe six skills should be actual technical skills. Um, but it's nice to put some soft skills as well. Um, like right here, uh, some of the awards that you've done, or maybe personality things. Like if you really are somebody who pays attention to detail, or you're a person who um, is truly a leader, um, it doesn't have to be all technical. You can definitely, if you're applying for a leadership role, the very first bullet point right here should be, um, you know, let um, managed teams of five to 35 people for the last 10 years, something like that, for instance. Um, so especially if you're applying to a manager role. Now, sometimes people ask me, what do I do if I, I'm a manager now, but I want to go back to, into individual contributor roles? Well, I would put that in my objective that you're very hands-on um, and I would make sure that down here in the um, body of your resume, anything that you were hands on in that you actually write what you did hands on, like hands on development of the web interface or, you know, things like that. And you can also mention that you manage a team and stuff like that, but make sure that they can see from your resume that you still have some kind of hands on skill. It's hard to make that tr um, transition either way if they don't see it in the resume. So let's say you want to um, you want to have a job that is um, that requires more leadership. Well, then you might want to mention some of the roles that you've project led on and what were the results? Did you what did you build? What did you develop? All right. So I, I think I've been talking for about 30 minutes and the guidance I had gotten for this was that the first um, the first bit of time would be uh, uh, going over the resume, um, how to write a resume. And then the second part of it would be um, answering questions. So I'd like to open it up for questions now. Anyone who has questions, please raise your hands. Diana, have you typed your question in the chat? I think I, I'll go look at the chat. So yes, let me see. So Diana, um, Diana says, I have worked at the um, Lowry, Lowry Oshawa from 1982 to 1984. Heart, um, I think that that meant to be a stroke. Is it heart stroke? Um, as volunteer job, breast cancer volunteer job, 
Um, okay, so you have a bunch of volunteer jobs is what you're saying, right, Deanna? Definitely mention them. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Any of your volunteer jobs, it's great to have. Um, now, if you have real jobs in there um, and you did volunteer work, you want to mention both. And if your work is volunteer work, mention that and use the same format. Okay? Awesome question. Thank you. Who's, and then I, um, who is the next person? But um, Shian Hong, were you asking? Yeah. Go ahead, Bharat. Oh, Bharat, yes. Good morning, and thank you for such a wonderful sharing this morning. My question is, is there any different format for senior positions, for C-suite executives, or for junior position, or for interns, or do you have a similar format for it? And I see this, uh, this <clears throat> the second question would be, I saw a modern format. Uh, my daughter is building her own resume. And I, I've been seeing, and she has been showing me a lot of uh, resumes before. So uh, is the modern format different than this format? Although, although the content would be same. There, there, the there's a number, yeah, there's a number of different kinds of formats. Um, my experience, um, brought, and this experience comes from sitting down with hiring managers is that most of the formats leave questions in the manager's mind as to the um, effectiveness of the candidate. Um, this format works across the board for everything and everybody. Now, um, executives, sure, um, executives will use that kind of format that I mentioned, where they where they highlight their um, their leadership and they highlight uh, like core skills. But even there. Um, in my experience, talking to other managers, reviewing resumes side by side, um, managers really have a preference for the chronological format. So there are there are a number of different kinds of formats, that, um, and you could try them. You know, maybe you you um, you, you take a uh, like do a do an experiment, send um, ten resumes to um, a, a, to a certain kind of company. Like, and then the same kind of company sends 10 of the other kind, not the same company, but different companies but are similar, different roles but are similar, and just see which one you, and, and write down which resume you sent to the company and see which one you get the biggest results from. Um, my experience just from um, my, all of the 24 years of working with hiring managers side by side reviewing resumes is that they really have a strong preference for a chronological and it's a reverse chronological where you start with the um, most current experience and you go backwards. And with, um, and with interns, by the way, or with new grads, um, you mentioned your daughter, um, they, they should outline if they haven't done any internships, well, I highly recommend while they're in school that they do internships. Internships are so key. They should try to get at least one internship, if not several internships, you know, especially between their, like their, um, it's harder as a freshman, but their sophomore year, they should try for one. Their, their junior year and their senior year, they've got to have internships because internships make a big difference um, on whether or not they, you know, what kind of companies will hire them. Um, they should, um, when they're, when they're um, new grads or when they're interns, one of the things that they should do is they should treat the projects that they've worked on, even when they've worked on it as a group, they should treat those projects as a job and outline those projects in a similar way. Okay. And, but once they have three years or five years of experience, they need to drop those projects off. They're not really relevant anymore. Now the, the things are most, unless, it, unless it's relevant to the job that they're applying for and they have no other experience except that project work, um, once people have about, I'd say, three to five years of experience, managers really start looking at the experience and not so much as the, at the specific projects. They look at the GPA, they look at what school somebody graduated from, and then they look at the experience. All right. Was there another question? Ashish? Yes. Ashish, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, hi. So for people who are transitioning, uh, you know, or transitioning roles, uh, for example, from business analyst, and maybe they're pursuing their masters, stepping into a more technical job as a software engineer, uh, 
even for getting the internship what would you prefer to specifically mention in the resume to be screened properly or to yeah to but, i mean that's a really thing. great that's a really great question. When people are trying to transition, one of the things that I recommend that they do is when they're looking at their resume and they're building their resume, that they actually have the job, their ideal job is right there. And then they look at each bullet point for their ideal job and they try to look at what have I done that is either that, even if it was on a volunteer basis, or similar to that so that a manager can see the, the crossover. And then the, the other thing is when they are trying to do a transition, um, having a, a very specific kind of cover letter can actually help. Having a general cover letter is no good. Just um, if, if your cover letter is just saying, oh, blah, 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 I'm so interested, this and that, and it's just like light and fluffy, you might as well not have a cover letter. But if you have your job in front of you and your experience and with, with, with that, um, uh, with your experience in mind and the, the, re the, the position you're looking at in mind, if you are going to give a cover, you want to have about three to five bullet points. I'd say five, but three, three is okay too. Basically, um, speaking to the most important things to that job, and they'll list them usually in order. Just like I mentioned that you should list your um, resume in order of strength. Um, usually, they list the most important requirements first in a job and then they, um, the less and less and less important requirements go down until at the bottom it's really almost like a nice to have. And so um, taking whatever you can to cross over to that role, like if you're going from a business analyst and you're trying to um, go into a more technical role, um, one of the things that you might want to do actually as a business analyst is you might want to ask your boss hey, you know, I'm really trying to get some more technical experience under my belt. Is there anything I can do on the side in my own time to develop this skill and still do my regular job? And that way you can actually put something like that on the resume. That's one of the most effective ways to build your experience is to ask for extra projects, ask for it on top of your current work, and let them know you're going to do that on the side and that you're going to make sure that you're still focusing on your 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 task and let them know that you're really trying to expand your skills and you really want to go into that area. And a lot of managers, um, when you talk to your manager and you just let them know that you're, you're really, you know, looking for something to, to stimulate your mind and you really want, want a little more and this is the area you, you want to do, especially if your company offers something like that, a lot of managers will let you take on extra projects and that will help build your resume. Does that answer your question, Ashish? Yeah, that makes so much sense, yeah. Uh, also, but I ha I do have a follow up. Like, uh, and this is yep. this could be a very specific case here. Uh, so, people. So, for my last job, I was a business analyst. My last job, I uh, I left it like three months ago, and I'm pursuing my master's as of now. Uh, what mm -hmm. what I am interested in is I'm interested in taking up internships, and uh, I'm trying to build resume for spe uh, specifically for that area, right? So the second Perfect. option is yeah. not with me right now. So according to you, it would be better if I on having a strong uh, cover letter, which specifies that I'm pursuing my master's in computer science, having um, these under my courses or something like that. Um, yeah, and you can actually just put that in your resume, like your education be, can be up at top, and you could say uh, pursuing master's, uh, put all of your details just like you would. I'm um, using that format I just showed you, which I'll, uh, again, send to Ab Abhijit, but um, you can um, uh, put your anticipated graduation date for your master's on there and um and then you might mention in your cover letter that you're pursuing your ma master's and what what exactly you're looking for that makes sense thank you Does so much Anita. yeah yeah that helps yep. a lot thank you so much awesome any any other questions i think there was another Anita? speaker too Namita? yes yeah, good. hi anita thank Namita? you that. yeah yeah can you hear me yes Thank you for the wonderful session. My question is so, okay, I am officially a quality assurance lead. I am doing the role of test manager whenever my manager is not available. And I am into recruitment as well as I interviewed around 500 candidates, both experienced and college graduates. So I was wondering, I am learning automation testing 
and I'm not well versed in that, but I'm interested in that line of work for future. So is it a good idea to maintain multiple resumes, one as a test manager, one as coordinations lead, one as, uh, you know, the future role of automation engineer. Once I'm add up with that technology, I can use that resume, right? Yeah, um, so that um, I, I believe what you're asking, um, uh, Namisa, is is it, is it good to have a resume that is focused on like, let's say test um, engineering, and then maybe you have another resume that's focused on, um, you know, l let's just say that your background, you had a, a background in test engineering, management, and web development. And, and I would have a resume that has more like, focus more uh, like the, the objective is a little more focused towards what you're trying to do and have it be a specific kind of resume rather than having a resume that is um, it tries to capture it all because you don't want you don't want the people that you're that are reviewing your resume to be too um, uh, to, to be too like confused like what in the world is this person doing anyway however that said um, you don't want to you're, you don't want to falsify your resume, and you do want to make sure that you're you are capturing all the skill. So if you have a management resume, it should really highlight like the first couple of bullet points are going to highlight more of your um, your leadership. If you're going for a quality assurance um, type of role, a test engineering role, your first couple of bullet points should really be about test engineering. It doesn't mean that you don't mention that you're also managing people and that you don't mention that you're also, you know, maybe, you know, in some like startups and stuff, you're, you do something like everything. You do a little bit of everything, right? So you, you definitely want to make sure that your core strengths also um, are coinciding with uh, the kind of role that you're looking for. Um, so, uh, the, yeah. how could I say it? The, the, the strongest things should be at the top. And if you have three core strengths where you could say they're equally strong, you're a manager, you're a web developer, and you're a test engineer, it's fine to, um, to have more focus on the test engineering if that's what you're going for. Does that make sense? What you don't want to do is you don't want to be, you don't want to falsify your resume and you don't want to like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, um, uh, powder it up and uh, fluff it up so much that it is no longer an accurate reflection of um, who you are. Um, and, uh, you know, if you crash and burn on those, um, uh, on the interviews for that, it's just, it, it's like horrible, you know? It's better if you're just honest at the very, um, at the very get go. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, honesty is the best way to go. Um, cr crunchy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, hi, thanks for the session. Uh, I'm an analytics profession, uh, professional. I, I'm a part of many tech interviews as well. I have seen people coming up with one pagers and uh, infographic resumes. Okay, and it's happening a lot these days. And I mean, what is your opinion on it? Like, I'm just having a question like, what is the reach if a, if a person comes uh, into the market with a one pager uh, with a non technical audience? Um, and yeah, one page of resumes I discourage. You need at least two pages, unless you unless you you're a new grad. You know, if you've got a few years of experience, you're you're gonna want um, to have a two page resume. Um, one page resume is often it's just impossible to to capture the the work you did. It's just impossible. And then you know it, maybe you make the writing so tiny that you know if people can't even read it just to fit it all in there. Um, there's really not a lot of, um, uh, there's not a lot of types of careers that a one page or resume that, um, would really work. Now, my dad is a microbiologist and guess what? A one page resume actually works for him. You know, he had like 30 or 40 years of microbiology and it, it's basically the same. It's just microbiology. You're looking at bacteria, um, you know, on Petri dishes, you know, through a microscope. But there's not a lot of careers, especially when we talk about technology. So with technology, because technology is moving so quickly and it changes so quickly, um, the, the one-pager resume has become ineffective because you can't really capture that, that graduated experience where you're, um, you're, you're, you know, you're building and building and building on that experience. Um, it's just hard to capture. So 
Um, I, I, I would say a 10 page resume is bad. Don't do a 10 page resume. Don't do a seven page resume. A two or three page resume is great. Yes. Um, yeah. wait, actually, uh, uh, Deanna, before I uh, call on you, um, Jay Maul was, um, um, has had, um, her hand up for a bit. So, um, uh, uh Kranti, did that answer it for you? Yeah. Just a follow-up question, Jeff. Final one is like, uh, I also see some infographics like people rating about the technology in, in the resume itself. Uh, is it the right way to do that? I wouldn't then, write about tech. I wouldn't write about technology. I would specifically say what you're doing with the technology. And the only case where you could write the, the, the technology is if you decided to do a resume <clears throat> where you have the, um, your, your role, like let's say you have the company, the date, your role at the company in one sentence that talks about what the company does. And then you have the bullet points under that. That's the only time I would talk about technology. Otherwise, speak to what you did. And, um, and that, by the way, um, in your interviews, say I, don't say we, I, I did this, I did that. Even if you worked in a group project with five people, you want to talk about what you did on that project, not what the five people together did, but what was your part of that contribution. Do not use we when you're talking about um, about yourself in an interview, because otherwise that manager is going to want to hire the other person on your team and not you. Okay. So speak to the things that you did. All right. Um, is, is that it? Um, Crumpy? This is a great quote using I, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jay Ma? Hey, Anita. Yeah, thank you. So the question I have is if you have graduated two decades ago, do you still put the year? Then the second question I have is, say you have been stay at home mom for long, like eight years, how would you put, what is the title you would put as the experience? And the third question is, you mentioned about bullet points. Do I add any supporting sentences to it? Um, okay, so let's uh, start at the top. Let's see here. Um, I, um, I, I, as far as graduation dates, if it's on your LinkedIn profile, it should be on your resume. Don't, don't, don't try to, um, if it's not on your LinkedIn profile and you just don't want to um, date yourself, um, it's probably okay not to put it. I, I don't, I personally would rather see uh, somebody's experience on their, um, uh, with the, the, the year personally, but um, I, I know that there's a point where uh, people might, they're not supposed to, but they could discriminate in unintentionally. And so if you really have graduated so long ago, I mean, I have 24 years of experience, right? And so if I put, you know, if I put like I graduated from high school in 1998, and then I went to this college, and then I went to that college in, in 1992, and then, you know, the person reading my resume is like, well, shoot, I wasn't even born until 2000, right? So, you, you know, it, it's okay if you don't have the, the date, but when you do the background check, make sure you do put the dates, okay? Um, so make sure that you're not doing any kind of lying or leaving off dates or anything, that everything is very accurate. And you should really have a resume that has every date and every accuracy um, uh, that you can refer back to, even if you choose to leave it off. And then regarding experience that you put on, I would say keeping 10 to 15 years of experience is ideal. Don't, um, do you have to put every job if you have 20, 25 years of experience? Not necessarily. You could, I've seen on some resumes, um, they, they take all of their experience down to like 15 years and then they make a mention, um, have also had, um, um, have also had experience doing this, this and this. And they just mention it, but they don't put the years attached to it. They make it like maybe two or three sentences, just kind of mentioning some of the other things that they did. So um, that way they, they don't date their, some, th themselves. They do show that there's more experience there, but they don't have to like pigeon, pigeonhole um, themselves into like a, a specific like age or something. And, and then I'm sorry, uh, uh, the next question I think was stay at home mom. Is that the one? Eight years of yeah. stay at home mom. Um, I think that that's very honorable and you could just put that in your resume. Stay at home mom for this time. Um, I, um, 
uh, if it's your most recent experience, you're gonna you're probably gonna want to apply to jobs that you're that are a little lower than what you left the industry in because you're gonna have to ramp up. You're gonna be rusty. But you're gonna also one one of the things you could do is you could take some um, a class or two while you're looking. You could um, make sure that you're you're kind of boning up on those skills and make sure that you're that you're fresh that you can talk about them freshly because you're you're still gonna get interviews and you might have to take a job that you is at a company that isn't like let's just say it's not the Googles the Facebooks the Nvidia's the Microsofts of the world, the Facebooks of the world, maybe you take a job at a startup first to rebuild that resume. And then you, um, and then if you really wanted to go to the Googles and the Microsofts and the NVIDIAs of the world, um, you could do that after you've basically um, uh, refreshed your skills. And, and speaking of that, stay at the job for at least two to three years. Don't, don't job hop. Looks really bad when you job hop. Ideally three to five years, but two to three years minimum. Um, all right, and Deanna, I did say you would be next. Did that answer everything for you, Jamal? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, the question I had, I had was like, one more uh, question was like, if you had a bullet point, like it is one sentence, do you put two or three sentences to it? Or is just in one sentence um, created? You, you can, you, you can, but it's best to, if, if you can do it as one, do it as one. Don't do more than two. You don't want to write a book. Okay, is thank that you. it? Yes. And, okay, great. And Deanna, yes. Did you put it in the chat or are you going to yeah. speak? Yes, yeah, I will read Deanna's question. Deanna says, but actually Grace had her hand up before. Grace, you want to go? Oh, oh Grace did? I'm sorry, I didn't yes. see um, I didn't see that. Sorry about that. Deanna, I'm going to come to yours uh, um, since uh, um, Abhiji is calling out Grace here. Oh, I'll come to yours right after. Yes, Grace? Yeah. Yes, my question is, for example, you wanted to be able to go to a higher position like a managerial role, but there's not, for your experience, you haven't really managed certain people, so you're going one, uh, one level higher, but then again, you have also volunteer work where you have those leadership skills. Would that, would that be able to suffice when you wanted to apply for such positions? I would be um, talking about all the project leadership you've done. So w when when you're going for a manager role, um, first of all, if you've never project led, you shouldn't be asking for a manager role. Okay, it, it, you've got to take the right steps because I can tell you, as somebody who had a manager once that did not have management experience and they um, they barely had project leadership experience. The experience I had as a, um, as an employee for that person was miserable, miserable. You really want to develop your skills in a in a um, in an orderly fashion that builds on it and doesn't leave big gaps. So if you're going for a manager role and that's the next role, then you're going to talk about what you've led. You've led this. You manage that. You may not have the manager title, but you have a senior or a principal or a lead title. And then in the bullet points, you're going to outline the things that you, you did. Um, led a team of five people to develop X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, if you helped write uh, reviews. Um, uh, wrote the reviews or contributed um, to the reviews um, for your project team um, that built X, Y, and Z, something like that. So there, it should really be um, a resume should really build on itself. And there's people who managed and then they went into tech and then they come back to management. And in the, um, in the summary, you're going to point to it. Um, managed um, for five years, then went technical and coming back to management, something like that. It should be it should be there in the summary so that they can kind of see it as a pointer. Oh, okay, she did manage here. Oh, she did do that. Like like that. It should build on itself. Okay. okay. Does that help? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Anita. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so Deanna. Um, how how do I um. I'm not sure I understand your question. How do I, how I do the body of my career jobs on resume? So, um, are, 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 are you here? Let me share my screen again. Um, where is that? 
where is that resume? Sorry, I'm, oh, there it is, okay. Um, so are you talking about this part of your resume right here? So how to build the body of this? So you want to have three, at least three bullet points, three to seven bullet points. You want to start with the top, the number one bullet point should really be something that you're very strong at. The first three bullet points, of, if you have seven bullet points, should be your top three strengths. And they should start with an action word. So it should start with um, a power verb or action word. Um, for instance, um, let me just scroll down here. And here are some of the examples that I have given um, for um, the most common, at least in engineering, the most common action words would be something like created, architect, developed, designed, coded, programmed, devised, maintained, diagnosed, things like that. And so you start, you think about what your job is. Like if someone said, Deanna, what do you do? And you think about your job and you say, you know what, I design and develop um, portfolios for uh um, for companies um, to purchase. I, I, I don't know, I've never actually looked at a, a, like a stock portfolio manager, but let's say your job was that. Um, you wanna start with the action verb and then you wanna um, have the, uh, the, the supporting evidence or the supporting information. So it should, it should have the action word and then what you did in that role, basically. Does that answer your question? Aaron, let me take, let me just take this back off of a uh, screen share. Um, how do I do that? Oh, stop share. There it is. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, did that answer? Um, I, yeah. Okay. Um, is there any other questions? And was there another speaker? I'm sorry. I, I, um, I thought that there was going to be a follow up to me and I don't want to take all the time. Or was it just me today? It was a great session, uh, Anita. Any anyone else who has questions for Anita? Priyanka, Jagadish, Bhupendra, Priti. Bharat has raised his hand. I have one. Yes. Okay. Oh. So um if a person is loyal to a company, they like to work in somewhere like I have done. Is it a good thing these days? Like, are you looked at that you have been redundant for the market? Therefore, you've been sticking on to one company. Is it job hopping is a style these days? Like after every five years, at least that people change. And I've been sticking to a company for almost 11 years now where I've really enjoyed. I've been valued also. So I love being here. But I reach a point where will the company start looking at things like this person did not get any jobs, so they're they're not even trying. I've never tried for so many years in between because I'm pretty much okay with mm. what I'm doing and I'm getting promoted time to time. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. know, is it the right yeah. time that I should make a move because I have yeah. to? Please. I wouldn't say, uh, if you enjoy your job, Preeti, stay at your job. However, what you want to do is build into your resume that you are progressing in the job. You don't want the job to look like you've been doing the exact same thing for the last 10 years. You want it, you want to show progression. So maybe, maybe you do it by title. So maybe, maybe when you first came on, you were, you know, you were um, an engineer and then you got promoted to senior engineer and then you took on a project lead role, um, managing, um, you know, a, a certain product line. And then maybe you went on to a different product line. So you can show that you've been progressing in your career, even though you love your company and people love, love it when they see, uh, you know, a lot of managers really like to see the, the seven to 10 years, a single company. They want to see that they don't like to see job hoppers. Um, you know, my company, I work at NVIDIA and I could say pretty much every single manager as soon as they see that there's more than um, one or two jobs where the person has been, um, hasn't been there for at least three to five years, um, it's a red flag. They, they just don't want to even deal with someone that they think is going to leave after two or three years because here at NVIDIA, it takes two years to ramp up. You're not even, you're not even ramped up on the technology for two years. You know, the first year you're really ramping up. Um, I'm sorry, my dog is barking. Hold on just one moment. I'm going to ask my son to, to take it out. Hold on.
Okay. So, um, uh, my company shies away quite heavily from people who, um, when they see that there, there's quite a bit of job hopping. So they'll, they'll run, run the other way. They'll, they'll put up with just a little bit of it. If there's a few jobs that are like five and 10 year jobs or eight year jobs, but if they see too much of that job hopping, um, you know, they, they just look at it and they're, they're like, this guy, this person is going to leave before they're even ramped up. We just don't want to put the time into it. We don't want to waste our time for someone who's just always looking. And a lot of times those job hoppers, sometimes it's like legitimate things. They just are bad choosers of jobs and they keep finding jobs that lay off everyone and go out of business. Like sometimes it really is that, but um, a lot of times um, people job hop for other reasons, like, um, you know, maybe they're money hungry. You know, a lot of companies, if you're money hungry, you know, you're not going to be attractive to the really good companies. They're, the really good companies are going to pay you well, but you're not going to be attractive to them. They're going to, they're going to see from the job hopping that you're just, you're not faithful. And they, they're going to look for someone who's, who's really going to um, be there for a longer run, someone who they can ramp up and then they can, um, once you've been developed over the next one or two years, now they can give you big projects and they can grow your experience at the company. That's what they're really looking for. Hopefully that answered your question, Thank Preeti. You. Thank you so much. That, is, that does. Thank yeah. you very much. And then Bharat. Uh, my question is nothing related to CV. How do uh, you said we can have a one to one with you? How do we do that? Do you have a calendar invite or can I get your LinkedIn or mm -hmm. how do I reach out? Um, of course, I barely, email I, I, I barely check my. Um, um, my LinkedIn, um, you can text me and you can um, email me. So I'm going to give you my, t um, my cell again, just for anyone who wasn't here at the beginning. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to you know, um, spend 15, 20, 30 minutes with you if, um, if, if it's needed. Um, and then here, let's, that's my, I'm just going to put it on one line so you can copy it all. Um, you can send me your resume, but make sure you text me because I get a lot of resumes and I get a lot of email and I'm pretty busy and, um, and sometimes I just miss it or I think it's a marketing thing and I'm just like, I am, I'm not going to deal with all these marketing calls or whatever. So make sure that you text me and that you mention that you specifically met me in this meeting and that you'd like to have a, a meeting with me. All right. And feel free to um, text me two or three times. I'm actually, um, I am on, um, I'm on two boards. Um, uh, I, so I'm a, a board member of two different boards. Um, I've got a kid. Um, I'm taking care of uh, um, an aged parent that is uh, struggling. I have four dogs, three cats, and a job. So if I miss your text, I have no problem with you texting me like 20 times. Hey, I really need you. I'm there, okay? Uh, that is very touching. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bharat Jaimal. Yeah. Um, I, oh, I think, oh, did I, did I send everybody that, um, text, uh, I might not have sent everyone that, sorry, I meant to um, send this that. text to all. Anita, Anita um, I think I'll, share, I'll share that out email, don't worry. Okay. I have all the okay, great. sessions so I can send you, yeah, sure. Jay Mark, okay, sure. great. Anita, Anita, question I have is, you mentioned about objective, you can keep it as general as possible. Can you share an example? Yes. I didn't come prepared for that. I'm so sorry, but I've done some work on objectives. So here's what I like to see in objectives is that you, um, that you mention um, stuff like um, to work at a company where I can grow with the company and where my skills can be used to um, help make that company great, something to that effect. So basically, um, basically saying that your objective is that that company succeeds using your skills. That's so a that's a, that's a good that's a good general ob objective if you're going to have a general objective. Thank and, you. And you can word it you can word it uh, specifically to your uh, yourself. And if you want to run the objective by me, you can feel free to reach out to me in text and um, and say here you know here's my background here's what I do. Um, what do you think about this objective? And I can look at it. I can you know I can kind of play with it a little bit. And I might say yes, it's awesome. Or I might say well. You know, that's okay, but maybe, you know, could you try this? How, how would you feel about this? 
and you know th there's lots of different ways to do an objective but um you know having an objective where you say that you want to make a big impact at the company um definitely makes the the reader feel like you're somebody who's a go-getter and who's gonna um who's really gonna go you know make a difference appreciate it thank you yes yes um is it xiang hong yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Anita, for a wonderful workshop. I, I think I learned a lot. So my question is for a uh, new graduate. Some of the gra uh, college students uh, do not have any internship experience, but they use mm -hmm. the, the, they, they take some uh, classes during the summer mm -hmm. or in the, mm -hmm occasion and to uh, graduate in advance, maybe mm -hmm. two or three mm -hmm. years. So is that good or uh, is having if they, if they, if they If they take, class, if they take cla classes versus internships. So um, if some of you are thinking of either yourself or maybe you have, um, a, a, maybe it's yeah. like, um, a, a, a student who's your child, for instance, maybe your child is graduating from college and you're trying to um, help your child build a resume. This is my sample uh, student resume. Someone who's um, in this sample is going to, uh, well, we could just say 2022. I, I, I probably wrote this back in um, 2017 or 2018. So this would be a, an example of a, um, of a student resume. I would hope that the student would try to get some internships while they're in school. Um, and then they would mention their, um, their degree. Um, and then here, because they don't have experience, maybe they just have one or two or three internships, um, then they would want to talk about their technical projects. And so they, they would want to um, spell out their technical projects almost the way that they would do, the way you would put together a resume they're going to talk about their, um, ac uh, and we could call it academic technical, or you could call it, um, 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 ac you could call it either a technical or academic um, projects, something like that. So um, this is this is how I would do it. And then if they um, they can mention their technical skills, um, they don't have as many skills. They shouldn't fluff up their resume. They're new grad. So they should stick with the core skills. And then if they had any kinds of awards, they should have their awards. Um, and they can have their awards up top too. They don't have to have it at the bottom. Um, the things that can move around are the, um, the education can be at the top or the bottom. Um, the technical skills sh um, really, um, if you're gonna um, list them out, um, if you list, if you have a good, um, so in this example, because they're an intern, because they're a new grad, they really don't have anything that they need to summarize. So they're putting their internship as their summary, and then they're putting their education, and then they're putting their academic um, project. So they do it a little bit differently, um, just so that uh, the, the focus um, can be on what, um, you know, where the core uh, skill that they have is. Like their resume should really speak to the, their strengths. So that when they go into that interview, if um, anything on their resume, if a manager talks about it, they should be able to answer at great length and be able to dive deep. Um, here's another thing, though, when you're talking about your resume, um, don't give like the five minute answer to a, a, to a question that should have been answered in one minute. So you could say something like, um, like, let's just look here. Uh, I worked at Intel doing cloud computing. Um, it was for an FBA um, accelerated project. Would you like to know more about that? Then they say, yes, tell me more about the acceleration. Great, I'm glad you asked. And then they go into that. Is there anything else you'd like to know about that? So when you're answering questions, show that you're not giving your whole knowledge in the question and see if you get, um, give some information and just say, did you want me to go deeper into that? And that, that's regardless of whether you're a student or you're a senior person, you're a manager, um, being able to give a succinct answer, but then at the same time show that you know more and give the opportunity for them to um, dive deeper into it by saying, is there anything else you'd like to, um, to know about that? Would you like me to get, um, go deeper into that? Um, that it, it's a really good tactic or a really good strategy for interviewing. 
So interviewing with your resume in mind, interviewing with your skills in mind, but um, succinctly, but offering um, the deep dive. It, um, so um, I can send this, um, Abhijit, just remind me, um, I'll send you um, both the sample student resume and the sample professional resume that I put together. Thank and you. Let me stop sharing. Yes, you're welcome. Thank Preeti, you, do you still have a question? Yeah, one more. So this is a tricky question and people ask, tell me something about yourself. Looks like it's a simple one, but then how long do you go on about it? Because if you have a lot of experience, you go on and on, sounds like a rambling. If you go too short, it thinks like, oh, you don't know much. So you just stopped because you had just a few lines to do something. So <laughs> help us with that. So, so I actually have a, um, an in-depth interview training um, session that I could do if you guys want me back at a future session. Um, this is one of the questions I answer in my interview training. Um, when somebody um, says, tell me about yourself, number one, do not answer them with an answer. Answer them with a question. I would love to. Where would you like me to begin? You don't want to answer, because here's the thing. They said, tell me about yourself. Are they asking for your best hobbies? Are they asking if you own a sailboat and you take you took it around the Caribbean, or are they asking for you to tell them about your last project at work? What are they asking? Are they, you don't know. You don't want to answer that question. If you answer that question without more guidance, um, then um, you could dig yourself into a hole. Um, one of the, um, one, one, um, when I was in, I uh, worked at a staffing, uh, at a staffing company, um, I, I sent this guy out for a job. He went on the interview. And the manager called me back when he was done with the interview. And he said, um, I asked the, the guy this, this, and this. And he, he told me everything I needed to know. I wanted to hire him. And then he dug himself out of the job. And now I don't want to hire him. So he, he talked so much that he basically talked himself into the job and right back out of the job. So you want to make sure that you're actually answering the questions that are being um, that they that are relevant to what they want to know, and you don't know when they say, "Tell me about yourself." You don't know. You don't know if they want to know about what you did for the summer last year, the, the your world travels, or whatever. You, you just don't know, um, or you don't know if they want to know. Like, do you have any um, uh, uh, hobbies that are technical related? Like, like what are they really asking? So just say, "I would love to." Where would you like me to begin? Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Anita. Yeah. I, I, I agree with you because I've noticed interviews when people expected you to talk about from the place <laughs> of your birth till the date. When some people expected to keep it very short just to talk about your job profile. By asking that question, it, they don't want to hear a lot more. They get bored. I see the face getting bored when I talk about it a lot. So that's, it's good to know what they want to know. Yeah. Question. And, that's, and um, that's the other thing. Look at your, when you're talking, you need to be looking at your interviewer. And you need to be paying attention because they're telling you a world of things in their face. And if you're talking too much, you're going to see it in their face. And if you ignore the signal, you're going to lose that interview. You're going to lose that interviewer. Sure. Um, I could give you one more question. Um, this is part of my interview training, but I'll give you one more um, one more thing. At the end of every interview with every single person, um, uh, this is your free your free tip for the day, non related to a uh, resume building. All right, so get ready. Write this down. Um, does everyone have a pen and paper? Um, so. Um, it's the million, actually here, you know what, I'll, I'll bring this up so you guys can uh, see some of the questions as well. This is the million dollar question, all right? The million dollar question. Um, it, hold on, where did it go? Uh, sorry, it's not coming up, hold on a second. Oh, yes, it's, yes it is, yes it is, okay, sorry. So, um, so this is the question that you will get your job from. 80% of your job is going to, um, and, and there's uh, also a follow-up sentence that you're going to say that is going to, um, that is going to clinch the deal for you so that you can get this job. Are you ready? Million dollar question. How do you see me fitting in? Don't say anything else. 
Don't say, oh, am I a good fit for this job? Oh, what do you think? Oh, did I do okay? <laughs> no, no. You say, how? No other words. These are the only words. Okay, I'm really serious about this. How do you see me fitting in? Shut up. And at this point, your interviewer is going to tell you one of three things. They're going to say what they like about you. They're going to say... Um, what they don't like about you or what you did wrong in the interview, what you're missing. And, or they're going to say, you know, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to my team and get back to you on that. Either way, when you say, how do you, fit me, if, um, how do you see me fitting in, a couple things happen. One of them is that um, it's like this. When you're driving a car for the first time, you're like, I, I'm in the market for, um, to buy a car. So I go to the dealership. I want to try, check out the car. I want to drive it. I want to see how it feels. How, um, the, and the sales guy is right next to me, right? And so he says, what do you think about this car? Now, most people are going to go, I'm not really sure yet. But the second that that guy said, what do you think about this car? I have to, in my mind, imagine owning the car. So for that moment, when he asked me that question, I actually imagined that car being mine, no matter what I said. When you ask the question, how do you see me fitting in? For that moment, they imagine you on their team. And this is the difference between um, the interview where they can barely remember your name and the interview where they kind of got embedded in their mind. Oh, wow. I really love Jamal. You know, she, she had such great questions. She was so engaged, right? So, and you don't see anything else. Now, the thing is, is that if they tell you, um, oh, well, you didn't have this or that, you know, we really needed it for the job. Wow, you know what? You're right. I don't have that experience. However, I have done this and that, and I would love the opportunity to work in logistics. If it was something that was important to this position, I would do whatever it took to bring myself up to speed, whether it was taking classes, reading books, working extra hours. This is what I want to do, and it's one of the reasons I applied for the job. So you, you basically like left them like, oh, yeah, you know what? She doesn't have logistics, but, man, I have never seen someone with a, a great attitude like this person's. So that's what you get when you say, how do you see me fitting in? So you get them in their mind, they cement you as the right candidate for the job. They tell you what you're missing in many cases. And sometimes it's, it's not, sometimes it doesn't work, you know? You won't get the job, but if they tell you what you're missing, now you know what you can take um, classes for. Now you know what you can bone up um, on the weekends and at nighttime, study up so that you can answer that better, right? And don't say, well, how did I do on the interview? Is there anything I should improve? Don't say that. Just say, how do you see me fitting in? That's the only question. And then you follow up the interview with every single person. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. This is exactly the kind of job I've been looking for. And I, um, I look forward to the next time um, we speak. Um, I feel I could make a valuable, I'm saying this totally out of order because I wasn't prepared for this. So let me, um, you know what, we'll just read this together. Thank you for taking the time because you want to memorize this. If I were preparing for an interview, this one, I would read to myself and I would say it like somebody was in front of me until it just came off as so sincere and so engaged and just like, I, you know, I love this company. And even if you have the thought in your mind, I'm not sure I want to work here. It is better to have options than no options. It's better to have two or three or four offers than no offers. You can always turn it down. But if you leave a bad impression, you can't get it back. You just can't get it back right? So thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. This is the kind of opportunity I've been looking for, and I think I could make a valuable contribution. I look forward to the next time we talk. And then they go, yeah, I look forward to the next time we talk too. You were amazing. All right. So there you go. All right. So let me stop sharing again. Any questions for me? Or are we, uh, say, we're probably at, we're probably at end of time. I want to say something. Yes. Pe people normally dread to talk to recruiters or HR persons, but you are the person to go and we are loving 
to hear you more, more and more. You are giving away all the secrets and tips today. <laughs> that will certainly help all of us. So I just want to share something as a token of appreciation, Anita. Thank you for taking time to attend the meeting and sharing all the tips that is necessary for us to build an outstanding resume. Hey, Thank you very much. It was really my pleasure. I, I really enjoyed being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you guys. Thank, thank you, you very Anita. much, Anita. Great thank you everyone you. for doing time. I think thank we so lost track of time today, Anita. <laughs> <laughs>